The most important thing in France is people on the streets. That's the most important thing. The only reason there is a problem in France is because there's people on the streets. Uh, the day after the European elections, large numbers of people went on the streets spontaneously, and one of the charts was unity, unity, echo of 1934, saying you've got to get your act together. We're not interested in your petty political careers. You have to get uh, a, a, a unified uh, electoral force against the fascists. And there was a pressure on the left party leaders. But more importantly, it was the numbers. The numbers. Um, the Saturday after the, the first big set of demonstrations, there were 650,000 people on the demonstrations against the far right. The next day, there were 150,000 more. So over that weekend, 800,000 people went on the streets. And one of the things, I mean, you know, France can seem overwhelmingly awful. The fact that, I mean, Genie, our, com our comrade I speak to most, says to me, there are 10 million people now who vote for fascists. And it's going to be hard to throw them back. The main thing is you have to try and top it off at 10 million and then begin to, to eat away at their vote. But they can't put people on the streets, not in large numbers. We can put 800,000 on the streets. They can't put 50,000 on the streets. Something Trotsky spoke about in the 1930s, actually. For a long time, it wasn't true in, eventually in Germany, but for a long time, you know, the, the anti-fascists had the social weight of the working class, and they could actually mobilise more people on the streets if they wanted to, because of the failures of the left. They never did it. But, you know, the left in France can put 800,000 people uh, the fascists can't do that at the moment. Very, very important to remember this. The Palestine movement is not as big as in Britain. Britain is the protest capital of the world about Palestine. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you, it's a big movement in France. It's a, it's a, it's a resource to draw on uh, if it can be mobilised. And this matters because whoever wins on the 7th of July, there is going to need to be a movement on the streets, in the cities, rural areas that is against the fascists, whether they're in government or not. I mean, they're not going away. They're, probably their real uh, target is the 2027 presidential elections. I'm not even sure they want to get elected this time. I think they'd rather be probably a big group in the parliament that can just keep criticising the city. And be clear, there's going to be turmoil. No party probably is going to have a majority in the French party. What's Macron going to do? He's going to be a minority. He can't call parliamentary elections again for two years under the Constitution. Uh, some people think that he will appoint a technocrat government. Christine Lagarde is mentioned, the head of the European Central Bank, which would be utterly disastrous uh, to get some pro-austerity force to come in. Because where do the fascists come from? They come because of the deep bitterness inside society about the old politicians who've let everybody down, who have squeezed people's living standards, who have made life worse for people, who pushed through, remember Macron did this, uh, an increase in the pension age against the strikes and the demonstrations He pushed it through without even the majority in Parliament, through decree he pushed it through. Uh, so the idea that they're going to put some uh, technocrat like Lagarde in charge, who won't have been elected, of course, who they will just produced to be the Prime Minister. Or even, it's an even more extraordinary suggestion, some people suggest that Macron will use Article 16 of the French Constitution, which means that he can rule uh, without Parliament. You know, he will rule by decree, essentially. I mean, this sounds quite like Germany in the 1930s, to be honest. You know, the Bruning on Papen, for those who know the history of, it, uh, of what they went through. Uh, Macron promised to be a war against fascism. And he is, they say in France, he's not a wall, he has been a causeway for the fascists, a path for the fascists that he's laid out in the way. The problem is the new popular front has too many of the politicians who actually themselves produce the pathway for the fascists. And therefore, okay, there's some simple things to say. What do we need in France? What we need in France is what we also need in Britain. We need a big united front in action in which we say all those who want to be active against the fascists need to be uh, united to be on the streets against them. Because whatever happens in the elections, you need to organise in the streets and at work to throw back against the fascists. The unions produce quite good publicity now 
against the national rally. Very late, but they produced quite good publicity. And the CGT, the, one of the biggest trade union federations, which traditionally doesn't tell people who to vote for, tells people very clearly now, vote for the new popular front. But there's a problem with the propaganda. It's very good about how the national rally is really a boss's party. That it's quite close to the employers. And it's got closer to the employers, actually, over the last few months. Um, but it doesn't say anything about racism. It doesn't say anything about Muslims except in the sort of general, let's be lovely to everybody. Right? It doesn't take on the arguments about the reason you don't have a, job, a good job, the reason that you, your health service is falling apart, the reason you can't find decent housing is because of people coming from abroad. Or that Muslims are a bit, you know, that Muslims aren't the enemy. Muslims are the people you live alongside and work alongside. So it doesn't take on all those arguments. Thank you. Uh, it doesn't take on that We need a movement that takes on the arguments about racism and the arguments about that the fascists are not your friends. That, they, that their supposed anti-corporatism is, uh, is a fake is a fake just as it is with Fafrat. Just as it's always been for fascists and the far right. They claim to be against the big corporations. In fact, they work with the big corporations. That's an important argument. It's no good if you don't take on the arguments about racism. Same with, you know, same, same, same thing. At the same time, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't think everything is going the far right's way. It's absolutely not. It's absolutely not. Because the bitterness in society produces the far right, it also produces the potential for a left to grow. You see this in France. The fact there are 800,000 people on the streets, the fact that there is this, you know, I, I don't think the new popular front is the way forward, but the fact that it even exists is an expression of the movement from Berlin, uh, and the fact that if you talk about the 1930s, people think, oh, the 1930s, that was a bloody awful decade, wasn't it? Uh, the far right and the fascist won. They did, but they didn't have to win. They didn't have to win. The 1930s was also the time of the Spanish Revolution. It's true that Franco won eventually in Spain, but there was a revolution in, France, in Spain as well, which could have led to the victory of the working class. Uh, in Germany, if there had been a united front against the fascists, it could have created a situation in which the communists and the socialists put open the door towards revolutionary movements in Germany. But uh, in France, it was a time when eventually uh, the fascists took over, uh, General Pétain took over, and uh, the Nazis invaded France. But it was the period of the great strikes of 1934 and 1936, and most, some of the most extraordinary, brilliant workers' mobilizations that existed. It was the time of the three great strikes in the United States of America and the birth of a real working class movement amongst black workers and unskilled workers and women workers uh, in the United States, which raised the level of struggle to almost revolutionary proportions. It was the time, even in Britain, of the unemployed movement and of the workers movement recovering after the defeat of 1926, the general strike. You know, in other words, it was a time when history hung in the balance. And it's like that now. It's like that now. So in Britain we have probably three and a half million people who've taken part in at least one demonstration over Palestine. Maybe it's more than that, you can't really work it out. But it's, it's probably three, three and a half, four million people maybe have been on a demonstration over Palestine. That's an extraordinary social movement, let me tell you. An extraordinary social movement. It's a time when people are looking, you know, uh, be clear about the content of the Labour vote. The Labour vote will not mean that people have signed up to Keir Starmer's agenda. It won't mean that people think, I'm, I'm for the genocide in Palestine. It won't be that I think that we ought to hold down workers' wages. It will be because people want bloody change. That's what will be exciting about it. Don't, don't buy the idea that it's signed up to Starmer. It's a much more interesting and important movement than that. France, there are 800,000 people on the streets for the left, for the left. If you mobilise that in every city, every town, every village, every square, you can smash the fascists in France. You can do that in Germany. In Germany, our comrades and others will be demonstrating uh, this weekend at the AFD conference in Essen. People are going to try and block the roads leading to the conference. Let's see. But that's the right attitude. You have to be active, you have to be on the streets, you have to pose an alternative, but you also need socialists at the heart of it. 
Socialists who say our enemy are the rich, not migrants and Muslims. They have to say we have a vision of a different sort of society. You're right to be angry, but the solution is not the one that's put forward by the fascists and the far right. And we're all together active, the ticket of entry is you want to fight the fascists on the streets to be part of that movement, but you also need sharp criticism of what has led us to this point. And what has led us to this point is the failures of the Labour style parties and the failures of the trade union leaders to call them out action over the issues that people felt were important. It's a warning from France, it's a warning from Europe, it's a warning from Farage and from Toby Robinson as well, because when Toby Robinson goes on the streets of London on the 27th of July, he is going to try and build a movement like the fascists in the rest of Europe. We have to learn the lesson, but we should do it as well, recognising that there's no reason why we can't, on the left, be strong enough to push back against the fascists and also strong enough to build a much, much bigger and more powerful socialism.